Father, what a joy it is to be here today, Woodland Heights Free Will Baptist Church, to be here celebrating 74 years of service to you in this community, 74 years of praising you and honoring you and telling people about you and giving out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all these people that's come today, come in preparation for that great reunion day yet to come that we're just singing about. What a day that's going to be when we meet you there on those beautiful shores of heaven. Stroll over heaven with each other and rehearse and, and, and refresh our memories of all the things that we've done here. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd guide and direct this service. Bless those who are singing to us and bless the word of God. In Christ's name, amen, amen. Thank you and be seated. Welcome. It's glad to have you this morning. Glad to have our, all of our regular folks and our visitors today. 
We're honored that you chose to come and worship the Lord with us today on this 74th homecoming day. In your bulletins, you'll find an insert of the history of the 74 years of Woodland Heights Free Will Baptist Church. 74 years of serving God right here in Martinsville, Virginia, telling people about Jesus. And we'll talk more about that as the, as the morning goes, uh, as we go through the service this morning. So, But it's good to have you this morning in the service. I can't... Uh, I can't go any further without just saying to my, my beautiful wife back there, thank you for 46 years of wonderful, wonderful marriage of serving the Lord Amen. together. Amen. God blessed us with two, two little kids, young kids. I know I robbed the cradle, but two little young kids 46 years ago, God put together it's been some ups and downs and ins and outs. It's been some rough times. I like that song, Forgiveness, that you sang last night. What a blessing that is. Because when you've been married 45 years, I've had to say I'm sorry a few times. And we both have. But uh, it's been wonderful, and I'm looking for 46 more, honey. So we'll just be around for a long time yet to come. So, But uh, thank you for being here this morning. We're here to celebrate and to praise the Lord. I've asked the Powells to come back and sing for us. Well, three or four songs this morning, however the Lord leads, and then we'll have the Word of God, but then don't leave after that. We'll have fellowship together in the fellowship hall. Wonderful food out there. I told them to keep the doors shut so the aroma doesn't get in here, So, uh, but because uh, you'll get hungry and won't be listening to the preaching after a while. But let's make welcome again the Powells from Raleigh, North Carolina. Give them a great big welcome. Jesus, what a wonderful name. Salvation still comes in one name. That name is Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon, spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Lord of all glory, the crown king of kings, all creation will thunder his name. That name is Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon, spot the sand, pure lamb of God. Jesus, the lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's son. Jesus, my Lord and creator. world's only Savior, Jesus, what a wonderful name. That name is Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon, spotless and pure Lamb of God. Oh, Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. Jesus. 
the ushers to come. Every Baptist church has got to have an offering on Sunday morning to pay the bills. May ask the ushers to come and we'll receive our Sunday morning offering. Give as the Lord has blessed you. This is an opportunity to get them to sing another song while we're taking an offering. So and some, some of y'all have been up and asked them requested two or three songs for them. So it's okay, brother, if you want to sing three or four songs and whatever they, they requested. But uh, give as, as unto the Lord as he's blessed you. Brother, brother Curtis, I ask the blessing on Alpha. Continue to lead and continue to guide. And Lord, we know and we feel that they will brighten your kingdom. And Lord, as we take up this offering, we just ask that you bless it and just let it be used around the world, Lord, to brighten your kingdom. Amen. Amen.
that seed was for me. so glad that he saved me a seat in that church in 1999, the day that I decided to give my heart and life over to him. If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he saved that seat you're sitting in just for you today so that you might come to know him. We had a song that we did last night that was requested, and I know we've got some friends here today who weren't with us last night, so I think we'll try this again. And I, I told them last night, just real quickly, I used to sing with a quartet, a, a, a men's quartet, and um, you know, sometimes I just miss that good old traditional quartet style harmony. So I've asked the family to do this song in that old traditional quartet style. And guys, let's just try to do it with no solos and just focus on that good pretty harmony, okay? All right. I love to tell the world about his love. As a journey on this pilgrim way, there's happiness and joy each day. It's a love to tell of the Savior's love, of the Savior's love. Soon I'll reach the one prepared for me. I'll be seen through eternity. It's a love to tell of the Savior's love, of the Savior's love. I love to tell of the Savior's Let's do just another rainy day, bud. 
When God tells you to build an ark, you better get start to build because the rain's coming. Amen. Coming and you're still humming yesterday's victory too. You've got it all together, but you haven't seen the weather that's coming when the day is through. But if you will stop and listen and just pay attention to the work God has today, He knows what you need and you can believe anything He has to say. If God says build an ark, it won't be just another rainy day. If God tells you to start, you better not hesitate. He's got a master plan, he's working, and the best thing for you to do is obey. If God says build an ark, it won't be just another rainy day. Just another rainy day. If God tells you to start, you better not hesitate. He's got a master plan, he's working, and the best thing for you to do is obey. If God says build an ark, it won't be just another rainy day. If God says build an ark, it won't be just another rainy day. If God tells you to start, you better not hesitate. He's got a master plan, he's working, and the best thing for you to do is obey. If God says build an ark, it won't be just another rainy day. If God says build an ark, you better start building an to Luke chapter 15. We'll begin reading in verse 11. A very unusual message today from this particular passage of scripture. A place to come home to. A place to come home to, the Father's house. Read with me, if you will, in Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion of the goods that falleth to me. And he divided them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he had sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have faint had filled his belly with husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants in my father's house have bread enough to spare? and I perish with hunger. I will arise, go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to be merry. 
Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he said to one of the servants, and asked, he called one of his servants and asked him what things, what things this meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and entreated him. And he answered, answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as the son but as soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured his living with harlots, and it, thou hast ki killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It, is me it was meet for, that we may, should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, is alive again, was lost, and is found. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day, 74 years of celebrating victory in Christ Jesus, 74 years of calling a place home, of having a home church that people can come to. Father, Lord, you've blessed us so greatly already this weekend, or yesterday and this morning. Father, Lord, we feel the spirit, of, the, the spirit of God in this place today. Father, I pray as we look into the Word of God, as we talk about church and talk about this being our home, Father, Lord, would Holy Spirit just give us what we need to say and Lord, may it take it to the hearts of those who listen. In Christ's name, amen. This is a, probably an unusual text to say what I'm going to say today from, but if you listen to it, you'll understand the meaning of this as I've never seen it before. Today here at Woodland Heights Free Will Baptist Church, we, say, say, we celebrate 74 years of ministry. See, that's since 1942. 1942, God impressed upon somebody's heart that there needed to be a gospel preaching church in Martinsville. In your bulletins, you'll find an insert of the history of this church, of, the, of this beginning, of its pastors, of its leadership, up today to what we're doing for God's glory here. Over the years, there have been many families, been many, many families that's called this place home, that's called this their home church. I couldn't tell you how many families I've understood and heard that has been part of this church. If we had the descendants of all these families, we'd have to build another with us today. We'd have to build another sanctuary to worship in. But many of these families are no longer here. Some have moved out of town. Some have moved to other places. And some have moved to their eternal home in heaven. What a wonderful thing it is to know. What a wonderful blessing and comfort it is to know that when God's true with us here, he has an eternal home, an eternal home for all those that love him and, and care for him accepted Christ as their Savior, there's an eternal home that waits, waits us. But until then, we're just going to be busy serving God here in this home, in this church home that God has given us. And there's been some who called this place home that came here that just left the church, wondering here and there, not serving God, even living in sin. How sad that is that people would leave a church where God had blessed them to be, come to know him, forsake the ministry and forsake everything around, and just go back into the world. Our heart breaks for those folks who used to be here just doing that. If you've ever been part of a good church home, a good church, and not attending anymore, there's an empty place in your heart, a place that will never be filled in your heart and life until you get back to where you need to be with God in the house of God where he established you at, at the beginning. As pastor of this church, it soon will be nine years. It seems like yesterday. It soon will be nine years. I've had a lot of people tell me as I visit, visit around, as I see them in the grocery stores, and as they tell me they watch our TV program, and they tell me, we used to go there. We used to go to that church. And I got so tired of hearing used to's and used to's, I just said, well, Lord, what can I say that's nice to them? in reply to them, and this is what I say, anytime somebody tells me now they, I used to go there, I just say, well, why don't you anymore? Why don't you come anymore? It's, there, it's, it's some reason in their heart, some problem in their life, that they're not attending anymore. But if you're here today, 
and you used to attend here, welcome back, welcome home. If you're new to us, you've not been in church before, and this is your first time with us, welcome to both you, to both you who have been here and those who are new to us. I hope you found a church home here with us today. But in our text today, we find a young man leaving the father's house. The father's house in this text is like the church, representative of the church, the house of God. Let's look at a few, just a few things, see a few things about leaving and returning home from this young man. Look with me in verses 12 and 13. And the younger man said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided into them his living. And not many days after the younger man, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. One stayed home in the church. One left and went to the world. The question that came to my mind was why did this young man feel necessary that he had to leave home? Or why did he leave the father's house? I can't tell you why he left the father's house. All I know, it must have been of not, of not much importance why he left because Christ would have told us in this story why he left. But people leave church all the time. This church and other good churches, people leave. They just wander away. And you wonder why. I see people come in here and people go and I wonder what in the world's wrong with them? Why are they gone? Have I done something to them? Has, has somebody hurt their feelings? And all sorts of things go through a pastor's mind and church member's mind when those who have attended regularly begin to leave and go elsewhere. But you know what? It doesn't matter why they leave. It doesn't matter what the reason was. I, I, several things went through my mind as I looked at this young man as he was leaving home. Was he restless? Was he restless? Was it something in him that he just couldn't have his own way? The way he wanted to live just wasn't the way the church was, was governed and the way the Word of God said he needed to leave? Maybe he couldn't do his own thing. I know f folks in church that's left churches because, man, we couldn't sing enough. We couldn't do this enough. We couldn't do that enough. We, we didn't have our own time to do this or do that. Maybe he just didn't like the Father's rules. Maybe he just didn't like the Father's rules. I'm going to tell you, if you don't like the Word of God, you won't like the Father's house. If you don't like the Father's rules, you won't like the Father's house. Maybe his older brother mistreated him. Don't have any evidence of that, but just, I'm just thinking reasons he may have left the house of God. Maybe things looked better elsewhere. Maybe just because the church across town had more people and they had more opportunities or more programs and maybe more for the kids and et cetera, whatever it was. So they decided to leave and go elsewhere. But you know, all these reasons are just excuses. All these reasons are just excuses. They're just made up in somebody's mind because it really doesn't matter. And it's the way it is in the house of God. There's always a reason. We can visit folks and say, what's the problem? And They'll give you excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. Somebody told me one time, a long time ago, and I really believe it's true, if you hear enough excuses, you realize that excuse is nothing but a, a lie stuffed in the skin of a reason. Just somebody making up something that really they don't go to the house of God for anymore. But it doesn't matter. If you're here today or if you're watching by TV or Internet, there's not anybody in this church that cares why you left. Not, it's not important. We just care that you come back. We just want to welcome you back home today. So if you've left and you're back, welcome. If you left and you're thinking about coming home, just come on back home anyhow. But anytime you leave a house of God, anytime you leave the church of God, there are dangers that will befall you. There are many dangers that you face by making the decision that I'm not going to go to church anymore. I'm going to leave the house of God. I'm not going to be there and worship anymore. Listen to some of them. Look with me in verse 13. And not many days after, the younger gathered, his, gathered all, all, all together 
and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance in riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. What an awful job for a Jew boy to do, feed swine. And he would have faint, or he would have fainted or died had he not filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat because no man gave to himself. Let's look at some dangers of leaving the house of God this morning. Now, this is not a joyful service, I mean, a sermon, but it's, it's a true sermon. I just want you to listen to this. There's always dangers when you decide, I'm going to leave God's house. The first one is the danger of wasted substance. It says that there in that far land, he wasted his substance with riotous living. After all the blessings that God's given one, that God's give you in the house of God, why in the world would somebody want to up and leave the house of God, a place of blessing? Because when you walk out those doors and when you go into the world, the first thing you're going to do is waste everything God's given you. Just throw it away. That's what this young man did. Not only was the wasted danger of wasting everything that he had, and he did, there's a danger of following the world, following the world. It says that he took his journey into a far country. You don't have to go far away to follow the world. The world is out there beside those doors right there beckoning you and asking you and pleading to you to leave the Father's house and come into the world. And that's exactly what this young man did. I saw a little picture the other day. It said, if you, don't teach, if you don't teach your children how to follow God when they're young, the world will teach them how not to follow God when they're older. That's the truth. But why would they leave and take, take, waste everything they had and then follow the world? Then there's a danger of nothingness. The danger of nothingness. He began to be in want. Look at this, look at this young man. A young man who had everything in the father's house. All the riches of the father. Decided for whatever reason he was going to leave. Went to his father. Father, give me everything that is due me. So he did, and he took it and walked out the door into a foreign country, and there he ended up with nothing, nothing. He began to be in want. He, couldn't, he didn't have a quarter to buy a Coca-Cola. He didn't have anything to buy a loaf of bread. He couldn't buy a meal, and he was about to starve to death. And you see, every one of these things build on the other. He left his father's house, Wasted his substance, went into the world and followed the world. He lost everything that he had, he became nothing. And then he had the danger of losing himself. It's always a danger when you leave the house of God of losing yourself. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to, sweet, to feed the swine. You see, he, he lost his personality. He lost his character. He lost his identity. He became as everybody else in the world. He was no longer in the Father's house. He was no longer special, a special person abiding in a special place. I want to tell you this this morning. Every person that's a child of God is a special person. Abiding in a special place called the house of God. And when you leave here, you leave your identity in the world and, leave, and begin to forget who God is. So he lost himself and became nothing. But then not only is it the danger of losing yourself, but it's a danger of lost fellowship. No man gave to him. If you're sitting here this morning and you've been out of church for any length of time, you know that you miss the fellowship of the house of God. You know, you miss that camaraderie with your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Those people who lift you up and build you up and hold you up in those times of trouble and trial. You've been there. You understand that. But when you lose the father, leave the Father's house, you lose fellowship. And then there's the danger of following a purveyor of philosophy. The danger of following a purveyor of philosophy with little or no scriptural and theological depth. There's plenty of those around. Preachers who preach a feel-good uh, theology. People who, preachers who say, well, it's okay, you live like you want to, and just come to church on Sunday and we'll make you feel good. Well, that's not what the Word of God does. But if you're not careful, having a scriptural background, you'll fall for that deception of Satan every time. 
And there's plenty of people gathered in churches this morning or places this morning they don't even call church anymore and listen to somebody who tell them how they can have heaven on earth and don't really know how to tell them how they can go to heaven from the earth, but tell them how they can feel good. Purveyors of philosophy with no biblical depth and no spiritual depth and no theological background. I want to tell you, preachers need to go back to preaching the word of God to people as they are in their sin and in their condition. And if you don't do that, you might as well not even get in the pulpit. This feel-good theology today is straight, straight from the pits of, of, of Satan this morning. And so if you're not careful when you leave a good church who preached the Word of God, who is doctrinally, that is doctrinally sound, you fall for anything out there in the world. So this young man left a good place, the Father's house, went into the world. All these things happened to him, we found in Scripture. But something else happened. You might leave the Father's house. You might not come to worship anymore. But you'll not be happy. Because if you belong to God, He'll never leave you alone. Your mind will be permeated by the Word of God. You'll be miserable as you can be. Can you imagine any more miserable thing than for a Jew boy to be out feeding swine and eating the husk off of corn, eating the things that the pigs eat? That's what you do when you leave the Father's house. But while He was there, feeding those swine, eating the slop of the world. The word of God says in verse 17 through 19 that he came to himself. Listen to this. He had thoughts of the father's house. He had thoughts of coming home. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. And he said, I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, in, and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son Make me as one of thy hired servants. If you've ever been out in the world from the Father's house, you understand one thing. If you're God's and you belong to him, chastening is certain in your life. God will never leave you alone. He will make you miserable. You will make yourself miserable by leaving the Father's house. But he said that while he was there, he came to himself. And he thought, why am I down here in this far country? Why am I in the world eating the slop of this world? When my father's house is full of plenty, plenty meals and my, all the servants there are enjoying what my father has. He changed his mind in his, in his direction. He says, I will go to my father and I will say to my father, I will sin against heaven before thee and no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Another thought passage come to my mind and we find in Romans 2, 4 that the apostle Paul says about the father's house. Or despise thou the riches of his goodness and the forbearance of, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth to repentance? I'm so glad that God never leaves us, leaves us alone, that when we get out of his way and out of his will, Holy Spirit arrests our hearts, rests our minds, convicts us of our wrong, and we need to think up, we get, get up and get back to the Father's house. If you're thinking about coming back to church, about, back to the Father's house, stop thinking about it and just get up and do it. You'll be welcome. And then we find not only the thought about coming home, but the act of coming home, the son returning and repenting of his leaving and of his sins. Look in verse 20 this morning. And he arose and he came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And he said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. I can tell you this morning that the greatest thing that you'll ever do if you're living it out of, out of the will of God is to find an old-fashioned altar of repentance, try some tears of repentance, and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go home to the Father's house and I'm going to serve you the rest of my life. But not only do I see, get, did he get up and leave in the world and come back to the Father's house, but when he came home, he found something that he knew was there but didn't expect to find. The father looking for him and willing to forgive him completely with full restoration back to the father's house. Look in verse 20. And he ran, and when he, was, and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I'm going to tell you as a pastor of this church, there's not a time that I come to this church that I don't look out the, to the back back there or to the front of the church, wondering who's going to come in those doors, wondering 
What wayward Christian is going to walk in those doors? Who used to come here that needs to come back to the Father's house? Maybe it's just some lost person who's never been in the Father's house comes in. We're always looking. We're always ready. We're always ready to give them the word of God. Welcome them back to the Father's house. But he found something else. He found that there was people who had been planning his return. People who had been looking for and planting, planning for his return. You say, you really think that? Yes, I do. You know, see, I believe the Father knew where the Son was all the time. I just That's who God is. Hey, you, you can't get away from God. You can't hide from Him. The Father knew where He was all the time. I believe the servants probably knew where He was all the time. But we find in verse 22, the Father said to His servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on Him, and put a ring on His hand and shoes on His feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, is alive again, was lost, and is found. And they begin to be merry. You see, this young man leaves the father's house, goes into the world, loses everything, lost, lost everything, even his identity he lost. Comes to himself because Holy Spirit's conviction of his heart, remembers the good things about the father's house, all the goodness that was there, all the blessings was there, all the benefits of being in the Father's house. He comes to himself and he thinks, my, why am I doing it here? It's time that a lot of people in this world wake up and wondering what they're doing, wondering in the world, when they need to be wondering back to the Father's house, getting back in the house of God. That's one thing's wrong with America today. Too many people have left the house of God and forgot the need to return. But as he came back, he realized something else. These people were anxious for his return. They were planning his return. They were looking forward to his coming home. The father had told the servants, be ready, be prepared. Have the calf in the stall fatted, ready to kill. Have the best robe cleaned and ready. And have, have a ring of sonship and have some shoes on his, to ready to put on his feet as he comes home from the world. He came home. The father loved him and ran to him and hugged him. The servants began to bring everything out and make ready to be married. For the last several years here at Woodland Heights Free Will Baptist Church, the faithful servants that's been part of this church for many, many years, the faithful servants of God, there's many of them here, have been busy making ready for your return, been busy making ready for a home for you to come to that you can find Christ and find the blessings of God and enjoy fellowship with one another. These people have been ready, making ready, looking forward to your return, for you to come and call this your home church, your home place, a place to come home to. Let me say this to you folks who've been so faithful in the last nine years I've been here. Some of you have been faithful for 60 years in this church or more. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being ready for people to walk in their doors. I can tell you this, every one of us, every time we're here, look forward to those doors opening and people coming into this church, making ready for you. It's not an accident that you're here. It's divine, divine gift of God that you, you can hear this morning. It's, it's his divine plan that you'll be here. And you're welcome this morning by these who've been busy. This church has been doing a lot of things in this community. This church is now known as the Neighborhood Church. People love us because we've been able to show love to our neighbors and to our neighborhood. Thank you, church, for always being vigilant, always being busy, always being prepared for people who come, and looking forward and longing for those to come home that was part of this church. You said, well, there was one other problem we found in this, in, in this text. There was a fellow called the elder brother. He said he became angry when he came and heard the music and saw the dancing. He didn't understand the meaning of why his father would welcome that son back, who went out into the world, who took his father's substance and wasted it in righteous living. But I saw something this week I'd never seen before. He went to the servant and said, what's going on in my daddy's house? And he said, well, don't you know? Your brother has been living in sin. Your brother has been dead to the house of God. He's home. He's home. And so it's time for us to be happy about it. 
It's time for us to make merry about it. He didn't buy that argument. So his daddy came out. His father came out. He said, son, you've been here? Yes, you have. But don't you realize it's time for us to be happy? It's time for us to be joyful because one that was lost is now found. Dead is now alive. I want to tell you what I've never seen before. I saw a change in this elder brother's heart. You see, no more do you find him ever complaining. No more do you find him ever griping. No more do you find him ever jealous of what his, his younger brother had when he came back home. He accepted him back into the house of God. I want to tell you this morning, as pastor of this church, I don't care why you left. Nobody here cares why you left. Not the first one of these servants in this church cares why you left. Whatever reason it was you made up, whatever reason it's the devil gave you to defeat you and to get you out of that father's house, we don't care. But I'm going to tell you this, there's a lot of elder brothers here in this church that's ready to welcome you home because we're glad you're here. We're glad that you're here. Welcome home. There's always, always joy in the house of the Father when the people who left has come home. It's wonderful to have a place to call home, isn't it? Aren't you glad we have a place to call home? Amen. If this is your home here, well, what, what was our home in heaven going to be like? Amen. It's going to be wonderful to be there one day. You're welcome. Welcome home. How about coming back and serving God? Be here when, when God would have you to be here when the doors are open. Thank you, church, for being a church that welcomes people back. God bless you. This is a short message, but let me just say this. If you need a church home to serve God, God's blessed you to be here. We're blessed to have this place. Maybe today you realize, I need to come home. You're sitting in these pews this morning. You're home. Why don't you make this your home church? Why don't you decide right now, I'm just going to leave the world and come back home to be with the church, to be with my f people who love me and will take care of me and enjoy the fellowship. Why don't you come home? Maybe you're here this morning and you don't know anything about a church home. You're lost. You've never, you've never accepted Christ. You've never had a church home. Christ stands welcome, ready this morning to welcome you to salvation, to give you the greatest gift you've ever had, salvation in himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this could be your church home. I'm going to ask the pals to come and sing an invitation song. If God has touched your heart and you want to make this your church home, would you just come? Maybe you just need to come and repent of where you've been in your life. Give your life back to God. Let's stand. See you.